I've had a lot of time to reflect. Accidents happen. And while I cannot talk about things in detail because the case has not been adjudicated. <laughs> What's up y'all, it's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're gonna talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac. Yes, Potomac, y'all. You know that last year was such a doozy and emotionally draining for Potomac for us. Y'all, I am like kind of like, mm, I don't know about the season. There's a lot of things I see that's going on that's going to piss me off a little bit. But I saw a lot of interviews from the ladies, so I'm trying to take it as I take it. Um, I'm still under the weather. Um, I'm on antibiotics, you know, so I definitely feel like tomorrow I'm going to bounce back. I'm supposed to go to work tomorrow. That's a dub. I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I, me even trying to do this right now, I'm like, girl, I'm stressing it. I already know, I'm going to bounce back, but y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out. I'm a flame and if you wanna play with me, you can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, want it, secure it, the bag. All right, so the episode opens up with a whole dramatic reenactment of Kara's car crash. And I feel like the difference between Karen and Shannon Bedore is very small things i felt like with shannon shannon really was like distraught about the whole situation um like she's crying and like it was very like it pulls you in where with karen karen took the a different route where she's like well i can't speak about anything we gotta wait until the courts you know it was what it was she got all these citations and i feel like she's trying to not necessarily you know i want to say she's not being forthright with it but i'm just like it does seem like she's trying to you know shift accountability elsewhere and i think that's where people are going to start getting frustrated with karen because i mean you have to take some responsibility that you are driving under the influence and don't get me wrong like i said with shannon people do it all the time people drive because, and they think that they have it or whatever but all it takes is one moment i have nothing happened to karen who am i yelling at okay <laughs> like i just don't want karen to go down this route of shifted accountability because for me people die every day from drug drivers and Karen could have, you know, hurt somebody. She could have killed someone. You know, these are certain things that could have happened, but they didn't happen. She didn't cause any property damage besides what was on her car. So, I mean, it is one of Catch-22 where with Shannon, she drove her car into someone's house. All the time to reflect. Accidents happen. And while I cannot talk about things in detail because the case has not been adjudicated. This morning we see Giselle driving her car to Karen's, right? She's on the phone with Ashley, just like, girl, do you see the news? All this stuff going on with Karen. I hope she's okay. She haven't talked to anybody about it. This is the third. And then Ashley's in her confessional say, like, this is her second time. You know, she's a repeated offender. So I would never think that Karen would, you know, do that, especially at her age of 60 when it happened. Driving. I have a DUI. The woman I know, I never thought that Karen would put herself in a situation. And then, you know, Giselle is saying, and you know, I'm definitely want to, you know, give her, you know, extend some grace to her and be there for her, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's piggy on Giselle real quick. I took a poll and a lot of you are saying, fuck Potomac, we're not watching Potomac, Giselle gotta go, and all that. Like, I already told y'all, I'm standing 10 toes on how I feel about Giselle. I felt like Giselle is the example of shifting accountability and have privilege. Um, a lot of people on Twitter are like, oh, we're going to give this a pass. We're going to give her a reset. Y'all could do that. That's perfectly fine. But I'm not going to not speak how I feel about the situation, especially for someone that watched Real Housewives of Potomac from season one all the way till now, right? Um, I feel like the premiere was great, but I do feel a gap with Candace not being, in the, being there. But we'll see what happens. So we see we segue over to some ladies houses mia is out getting ice cream with her kids and gordon there is gonna be a lot with mia this season right um her trying to navigate between her separation from gordon and her relationship with ike and i feel like mia is gonna have to take some accountability at the end of the episode we're gonna talk about it where mia got so upset but i kind of see where karen and giselle is coming from We'll talk about it but she's talking to gordon and he's just like okay you know what's going on with you and ike i didn't say with anybody else you just don't want him to go get a haircut with ink no you said it he's saying like look ike wants a paternity test you know i'm with ike and he wants a paternity test 
Um, and I feel like it's kind of a slap in the face as like, you know, if I was Gordon and that was my child and this has been my child, you know, and you're telling me, oh, well, this guy, this random guy that, you know, high school sweetheart, whatever, that you're dating, what's a paternity test of my child? It's kind of a slap in the face. And she's talking about, well, he has a right in the courts. Does he though? Does he though? No, it's not. Now, are you concerned that if you get a paternity test that it could show that Jeremiah is not mine? It's always a possibility. Okay. So she's like, well, if you're going to be really resistant to this, we could go to the courts and da da da. And I just feel like it's caused a lot of, it's going to cause a lot of um, trauma to your kids because this is someone coming from a divorced household. My mom, she got remarried. My dad, he got remarried. And then they both got remarried again. Um, so I've seen four divorces, six marriages. Um, and it's a lot, especially when you're a child and you really don't understand the nuances of these relationships until you get older. But it could cause a lot of distress. It could, it could cause a lot of abandonment issues and confusion towards your kids. And I think that's something that Mia's going to have to look into because you're trying to tell, you don't know what I is telling your kids. Like, let's say I is with the kid Solo Fidelo and he's over here like, oh, you know, I'm your daddy. I'm blah, blah, blah. We don't fucking know. It'd be weird as fuck, but we don't know. So I, I definitely understand Gordon's frustration, right? And we're over and we see Ashley with her attorney and she's trying to navigate, you know, post, you know, filing a divorce because she's not divorced, but post. She's like, well, you know, I am trying to date and I'm trying to do this. So shout out to Ashley for over here trying to get that kitty cat scratch. I ain't mad at you, girl. But with Ashley, I'm just like, you still not divorced. We're still stuck in limbo. She's trying to get more money from, um, from, let's say, Gordon. For Michael but she didn't read the prenup or the post up at this point like girl you should have read what the man put in there or had your lawyer go over it instead of your side and he did on camera <laughs> girl jump back over to Giselle and she's at Karen's house she picks her up you know Ray he's over here being Ray as usual Karen gets to the car she's like hey girl you know we're gonna show for you around girl. we're not gonna let you drive girl we're not gonna do that and you know they're taking jabs which i think karen knew that they're gonna be taking jabs at her obviously they talk about the trauma about going back to the site of the crash and that's a real thing i've been in two accidents and both accidents uh it took me a minute to go back to the site where the crash was because you all feel like it's going to happen again if i drive by right drive by there is it triggering at all uh i would rather not because okay. no okay if it's not triggering i'm blessed oh God. They talk about rekindling their, um, you know, friendship and, you know, being a support system and a beam for, you know, Karen and Giselle. Like, you know, I'm here for you, this, and third. And my whole thing with Giselle is, like, it's sad that we didn't get a chance to see this Giselle last season. You were very guarded. You were all these things. You wanted an apology from Candace, but you couldn't even extend the accountability at the reunion. So it's hard for me to, like... She's like, well, you know, I'm here. I'm an open book. I'm trying to be here for the girls. I'm just like, you're here trying to be here for the girls now. But when Candace was here, girl, you was over here. Shut off. I, I don't know. We'll see. We jump over to see Dr. Wendy. And she's with her husband. She's talking about, you know, I'm turning 40. You know, I'm in a era of reconciliation. This at the third. Um, and she actually sends her resignation letter to John Hopkins University. She my family with immense gratitude, Professor Wendy Osefo. Oh my. Like, you know, after this month, I would no longer be a professor at John Hopkins University. I'm just like, dang, that's tenure too. But it's one of those things that she wasn't, she even expressed this in earlier seasons that she did this because of her mom. She wasn't passionate about, I wouldn't say passionate, but I think that wasn't her dream or goal in life to be a teacher. So she wanted to move on with bigger, better things. We see Karen goes to a boutique and we see one of Karen's friends that we see her time and time, you know, nothing too crazy. Oh, uh, I think her name is like Valerie or something, something like that. But we see the new housewife, Stacy walk in and Stacy's like, hey girls, what's up? How are you doing? Supermodel. I feel like I need to come out of the case. <laughs> oh my God, that's going to be beautiful. And she is killing again. We learn a little bit of her backstory that she used to work for QVC. She was recently married. She has a daughter. Um, and you know, they're over here going through like, okay, let's look at these outfits. Let's try to get something on. Really cute. Ah, 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 ah. I'm not trying to start no mess, but do you see a ring on Stacy's finger? And Kara was like, I did notice, I didn't see a ring. So when Stacey come back, she's like, what? what's going on? She's like, where's your ring? She's like, oh, well, I've been, you know, 
I think she said divorced, not separated, but she's been divorced, I believe, for a year. And that's what really prompted her to come back to the, the DMV. Where is the ring? I have been separated for a year. What? Um, I think her husband was opposed to come back to the DMV, but she wanted to come back. I don't know, maybe it could be something with the show that he didn't want to be on the show and that could have been what it was. I hope not that a show will break someone up, but to each his own, you never know these days. Um, they talk about, you know, Giselle and Ashley's um, party that they're having for Kara's birthday. Kara's her 61, um, triple 20 plus one. And, you know, they're doing like this hat theme party. We see Giselle's little uh, video she sent out to all the girls. It seemed like it's shady and, you know, in it but we, you know Giselle right so we get to the hat, hat party right and Giselle looks gorgeous they're over here downtown I believe they're in DC it looks like DC like a little pop-up shop so all the girls are coming into the party and we see that Mia has brought a new friend her name is Jazzy Made it. gorgeous stunning woman body is divine face beat um she is married to a kansas city chief football player um two-time nfl super bowl winner shout out to them um we'll see what happens with her um i know that bravo is casting for our new kansas city chief show maybe that's why she didn't become a full-time housewife because we all heard well i know i heard that she was going to be the housewife but kiana has got the spot <laughs> so interesting so, you know, we when Mia and Jazzy come in, they see Jacqueline. They're like, oh my God, hey girl, you know, I heard that she don't play about you. Ah, 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 you know, just a little banter back and forth. They sit down, the girls learn a little bit more about Jazzy. So anybody, everybody was like, well, have y'all heard from Karen? I haven't heard from Karen since, you know, everything happened with her DUI. So Jacqueline's talking about, oh yeah, well, you know, I've heard her, I talked to her a few days ago and she was on the phone. She sounded very like intoxicated. But she told you she called you when she was drunk, so that really doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> she was drunk recently. What? Recently? She seemed a little tipsy on the phone. I said, here the fuck we go. Because I feel like Jacqueline's just gonna come up with mess. And I just hope Jacqueline's not coming back on the show just to be a soldier and a, a dog for Mia. Because if so, girl, we don't need it. I don't need it, right? Really don't at this point. Conversation when it's like, look, I'm not engaging in the conversation. Um, but Stacy comes in as well. And she hugs Wendy, she hugs Giselle, and Stacy and Wendy actually know each other because they both were on a committee together. Same thing with Karen, same thing with Char Charisse. So it's like this committee is like, it's, it's a lot of women <laughs> coming from this committee, right? Hello. Karen comes in, looks great. Um, she has like the bedazzled hat, was what it was. So when Karen sits down, the girls, Giselle let her know, like, you know, some of the girls had questions and it's not my place to answer questions on your behalf. So I feel like you should answer the questions. So Karen's like, you know, that's fine. I'm here. Shoot. So what you got to say? So Jacqueline, she speaks up and I'm like, okay, she's going to, you know, let her know that she was drunk on the phone. So Jacqueline's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy that you're okay. You're, you didn't hurt any other family. No family was hurt or injured, but you know, we're not going to pass judgment on you. And I'm just, I'm so happy and blessed that you are okay and that nobody was hurt. It's all what happened, so I don't feel like anybody should cast judgment. I'm just like, girl, that's some fucking bullshit because you just sat up here and just said this bitch was drunk. So which one is, is she over here in the town drunk or is she just going to get a pass and just like, we understand, girl, we understand. Because Stacey, she was like, well, you know, we can't pass judgment. We can't in a sense, but we can. Because, girl, you crash your car into a tree and we still don't know why because you're not letting us know why. Kara's letting me know, like, look, at the end of the day, I want to know who's going to be my real friend. You can swing whichever way you're going to swing, but who's going to be my real friend, right? So they're playing the little hat game, and we're going to skip to the part with Mia. So they asked the question about Mia, like, how is the Gordon Ike situation? So Mia's like, everything is great. Ike, you know, he is a DJ. And you hear Jacqueline's like, he's not, he's not a rapper. <laughs> I'm just like, she acting like a dog. She acting like the sidekick, but whatever. Look forward to meeting the DJ. He is a radio personality. Oh He's not a rapper. Yes, he is not. He's like, you know, really helping me, and me with Gordon. 
I'm supporting Gordon 100%. And, like, you know, I even, we actually, while he's like, she's like, I even helps fold Gordon's laundry and take it to him. And I washed it for him and inked it folded. And yeah. we took it to his apartment and we put it away. Ink is washing Gordon's drawers. <laughs> And I'm just like, okay, that's cool and fine, whatever. But what Giselle and Karen were saying about the fact that you have this man in the life saying that he's the daddy. And you have this man, Gordon, who's been a structure and pivotal part in your children's life from birth. That could cause a lot of confusion. Jeremiah no, said, I saw mommy sleeping with Mr. Ink. And I feel like Mia got upset because they were calling into question her navigating the relationships between the two not necessarily calling the question her motherhood and or her mothering skills um i think they were calling the question her own skills but her children will be affected by her choices that she's making in her personal life care for your children you know that and the fact that your babies were plastered all over the news really really bothered me and i told you so Mia over here gets upset. She starts to like really tear up. Like you know, it's crazy that y'all are y'all going to try to talk about my mothering and my skills with my children. Like that is so crazy that you did that, Giselle. And like she storms off, go to the bathroom, and that's where the episode ended. But I'm looking at Mia like, girl, nobody's calling the question your motherhood. Nobody's calling the question your mothering skills. What they're saying is the actions that your grown ass is doing. Is going to affect your kids sooner or later. Gordon, there was a mix and there was a mix. They're protecting it for you to sit there and say that they're not as up. Both of you. Trust me, I personally, I went through this. I was the child. And a lot of people feel like young kids don't remember or don't remember all these things. I remember a lot when I was a little kid. I remember the traumatic moments within my mom and dad's relationship. I remember that. And I was like six, four, five years old. Like, that's very young and her kids are that age so a lot of these things they're going to remember so she should be very you know privy and be very cautious about what she does around her kids right but y'all let me know what you guys think i know a lot of y'all not watching Potomac, but just watch my youtube videos i'll put some clips in um uh, but y'all like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video Cause I get you hype, but when I run out all around, cause I